The horizontal sundial is probably less common than the vertical one, but it is an old symbol of the measurement of time, that fascinates people, even today. Gardeners and landscapers know how to highlight a perspective or mark the crossing of two alleys, using a horizontal sundial, installed on a small column. Often engraved on stone, with an ornamented metallic style, this kind of sundial is found frequently in England and English-speaking countries. Nowadays, we can find some of them in urban parks. They may be modern, in metal, resin or stone, but a horizontal sundial always attracts passers-by. Some of them are the canvas of the artistic expression of their creators, with a style decorated with characters or animals, a nice layout of our lines and sometimes a philosophical motto. Larger, it may decorate a square or the crossing of two lanes in a park. Or, even bigger, a giant horizontal sundial may become a structural element of a city. In all cases, behind its aesthetic, a scientific meaning is hiding. Gnomonics, the science of sundials. The layout of a sundial is the consequence of the relative movement of the earth around the sun. Nature is providing one information, time, and a reason to enjoy these projects. A horizontal sundial is drawn, as we can expect, on a horizontal plate. It has a style that casts a shadow on the sundial. This style is aligned with the north-south axis and its edge points to the celestial pole. In the northern hemisphere, it points to the north pole, near Polaris. The angle made by the style with the plate depends on the latitude. We see here two different angles for two locations of different latitude. In an extreme case, when the sundial is installed at the pole, its style is vertical. The horizontal sundial is, in this case, also an equatorial sundial. The style may be a triangle, or just a rod. In all cases, it represents, or contains, either the polar style, or the gnomon, or both. The gnomon is installed perpendicularly to the plate, at point A, which is the center of the layout. The polar style casts its shadow on an hour line. It is installed at point B, where all hour lines converge. In the case of a triangular style, its upper edge is the polar style. The junction of the gnomon and the polar style, called point C, is very important. It casts a shadow at a point that indicates other information than time, such as the date or other indications. When designing a sundial, the most important dimension is the height of the gnomon. It is what determines the scale of the layout, independently from the size of the plate. Here, an example of drawing with a small style of 20 mm of height. The drawing is quite compact, limited by the two solstice arcs. Our lines are close to each other. With a style of 50 mm of height, the drawing is larger. For the same plate size, we can see less lines, and here the winter solstice arc is not visible anymore, as it is outside the plate. A lot of horizontal sundials only have a polar style of arbitrary length. This type of sundial can only mark time with its hour lines. But there are no solstice arcs. When the sun rises at the east, the style casts a shadow on the western side. During the day, the shadow rotates until the noon line, when the sun transits at the meridian. Then, passes on the west side, casting a shadow on the eastern side. The sundial is therefore cut by the noon line, with a morning side and an afternoon side. With a style of limited length, corresponding to the hypotenuse of the triangular style, it is possible to mark other kinds of information, related to the date. Or more precisely, information that is related to the sun's declination. Here, a style ending with an eyepiece, casts a light spot instead of a shadow. When the sun is the highest in the sky, at the summer solstice, the spot is on the noon line, close to point A, which is the foot of the gnomon. In this case, the gnomon is virtual, but we need to realize that the eyepiece is placed at the position of the gnomon's end. During the solstice, the spot moves along an hyperbolic arc, on the southern side of the sundial. On the contrary, at the winter solstice, the sun is low in its shadow, or here the spot is far away from the gnomon's foot. 
The spot moves along an arc on the northern side of the sundial. At the equinoxes, the spot moves along a straight line on the center of the sundial. Frequently, other arcs are drawn, called zodiac arcs. They correspond to a division of the Earth's orbit in 12 sectors of 30 degrees of ecliptic longitude. In the northern hemisphere, when we face the south, the sun rises on the east on our left, then passes at the meridian in front of us, and sets on the west side, on our right. In the southern hemisphere, when we face the north, the sun rises on the east on our right, passes at the meridian in front of us, and sets on the west side, on our left. The drawing is therefore inverted. The example shown here, with a sundial for each hemisphere, shows that ours are inverted right to left. Solstice arcs are also inverted upside down. The red arc, corresponding to June 21, is for the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere, but the winter solstice in the southern hemisphere. The blue arc is for the solstice of December 21. We can also note that for the sundial made for Saint-Pierre de la Réunion, which is at 21 degrees south of latitude, slightly below the Tropic of Capricorn, the foot of the gnomon is inside the drawing, above the arc of December 21. It means that the sun is crossing beyond the vertical, around the summer solstice. A small sundial can be printed directly to scale, possibly on several pages. But for a larger sundial, it will be possible to draw the lines from the coordinates exported by the shadow software. Some points are given in Cartesian coordinates in a XY axis system, centered at point A. Other points are given in polar coordinates with respect to point B. Each point is then given with an angle and a radius. The dimensions of the style are given in a schematic, and summarized in the technical datasheet of the sundial, which also specifies the different angles of the triangle. So, nothing will stop you to start a project to design your own horizontal sundial. The shadow software will take care of the calculations and the drawings, in order to let you focus on the manual and artistic skills. Should you choose to design a sundial with an ancient style for your garden? Or a very large sundial for your town? Or even an engraved sundial on a copper sheet, richly decorated? Don't hesitate to go on, as the many shadows users. Their sundials can be seen in the gallery on the website. All the graphics of this presentation were generated with the Shadows software and completed with annotations in PowerPoint. Shadows can be downloaded for free on www.shadowspro.com.